Do you ever wish you could have a life do-over, similar to a makeover or a house renovation? A chance to try something again with a different result? Try Again with Monique is a place where I will give you my take and also hear from you regarding the questions and challenges we all face in life. You will either be inspired to try life again, over and over again, or make some really good lemonade from those sour lemons. Either way, I got you. If at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique. So today I am speaking with William Clark, also known as Pastor Clark, who's a senior pastor of a church in Buffalo, New York, and has extensive construction project management and construction engineering experience, among so many other hats that he wears. It's really a bit surreal for me to interview him today because he is my former pastor, who was like a father figure to me, and he really helped shape my view of today's topic, which is personal success. I'm I'm excited to hear what he has to say and what he has to share with all of us. I do encourage you, if you're listening, to grab a pen and paper, because as the saying goes, the teacher is in session whenever he speaks. So grab your pen, grab your paper, and you'll thank me later. Welcome, Pastor Clark, to the podcast, and thank you for agreeing to talk to me today. How are you? I'm doing very well, uh, Monique, and thank you for the invite, and uh, your words are are very flattering, and uh, I I don't know if I can live up to that billing. <laughs> oh, you already have. I'm, 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 it's, it's my honor and pleasure to have you. Thank you so much. Um, Pastor, my intention for the Try Again with Monique podcast is really to encourage people to think about their lives differently and to, you know, recalibrate if necessary, especially if they don't like how things turned out, you know, the first time Mm -hmm. around. As Mm -hmm. you know, today's topic is, you know, personal success. And and I really want to know how you define it and how you've navigated, you know, the various transitions in your own life. And what I want you to share, uh, you know, at the top is a moment in your life or your career in which you reinvented yourself or you tried something new or different. Talk to us about that transition and how yeah. it came about. Wow. Well, um, I, I know the year exactly and I, almost the month and, and almost the very day. Um, mm-hmm. There was a sequence of events that led up to it, but I can go back to the year of 2002. That's 20 years ago, and um, I made the decision to no longer work bivocationally, but to give myself full time to ministry. Okay. And um, it was it was uh, it was a surreal kind of moment for me, and I'm speaking, uh, you know, as if a moment was you know a moment, but it this moment was the culmination of obviously many moments. Every moment is the culmination of many moments, right? Mm -hmm. There, um, you know, these instantaneous decisions that we think we make, we really don't. There are a series of things, events, encounters that bring us to, to a decision. Um, and that that um, definitive moment, if you will, for me was in 2002. And I, I left the engineering firm. Um, God's grace, I still have favor. And from time to time, I will go back and, and moonlight, as it were, and serve on a, on a project here or there short term. But um, 20 years ago, I made that decision um, to to just give myself to full-time ministry. Um, It wasn't an easy decision. It wasn't Uh an easy decision economically, you know, certainly on the, on the financial side and, you know, taking care of my, my, with my obligations to my family, you know, my wife and my children and so on and so forth. Sure. It, it was a big, it was a big deal. Um, But there, there is a moment of inner or personal or inter confrontation that we all have to be willing um, to have, um, if we are going to be successful, I think in, in the larger scope of this conversation with, with success being our overarching theme, we mm-hmm. often think about success as something external happening to us, right. but success really is what, what goes on with you internally that happens to your external. And, um, Interesting. Yeah, I, if it if 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 it doesn't happen internally, 
you you can't you can't make it happen externally and if it happens you'll find rather quickly that you don't have the wherewithal to sustain the happening so it, it has to be internal and uh, god who is so gracious and kind and sovereign in his dealings with us will give us moment after moment after moment where we are confronted with what is going on inside of us um, comfort zones they have to be deconstructed they're 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 a paralyzer they paralyze us um, and so yeah just just the snippet of my moment and um, in in hindsight or retrospect I can look back and see that there were there were months uh, probably two years where God was bringing me to that definitive moment and um, all of the things internally that I had to be willing to confront, deconstruct, and then uh, allow God by his grace and the input of others in my life to reconstruct um, and, and, and move forward. Okay, okay. You really touched on some things, but I'm going to ask you, what did you learn from that experience? I love that you said, um, you talked about comfort zones um, being paralyzing. I, I believe that to be true. I, I think there's some an expression that says no, growth never really happens from a comfort zone. Um, that, that, mm. that would, that, you know, that I think that's true. And that's very interesting so that you should say it's paralyzing because comfort zones, you can, it's familiar. And so you can, you can, it can be paralyzing. It's paralyzing as fear can be, you know, in our lives. Um, but is there anything else you learned? from that experience, from making that switch, uh, you know, from a traditional sort of job engineering to full-time ministry and really trusting God to, to, to take you there? You know, I, I, I can honestly say, um, you know, I, I have this lingering thought in my head about comfort zones. You know, every, every, I believe every, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, um, you know, has has you know this this superhero on the inside you know just just metaphorically let me call it your superman your comfort zone is your kryptonite to your comfort zones are kryptonite to your superman wow. okay and it's just so true and and so they have to be confronted they have to be deconstructed and and we've got to be willing to pivot there's a term there um, that I think is underused in some circles and overused in others. Mm -hmm. But until you're able to, to pivot, you can't go in a new direction. How you, did you, you how did you get out of that comfort zone to make that major transition? You, you mentioned that, you know, uh, you know, uh, talking to people and, you know, trusting God. Are there some other ways that you kind of helped yourself get out of that comfort yeah. zone and just make that leap of faith? Yeah, those were big. Those were big for me. But I, um, there, there's um, years and years and years ago, I heard of um, just my gosh, this guy was so this older man in the in the faith and in the gospel preach a message, and the, the title of the message was "When the Eagle Stirs Her Nest," and you know those young ones can stay in the nest so long; it's so comfortable. Mom's bringing food. Sure, I, sure. I, I don't have to do anything. And uh, mom knows when it's time to go, so she'll she'll flip the bottom of the nest, right? What was what was the uncomfortable stuff, which was covered by by the soft leaves and feathers and so on and so forth. She'll stir that nest to make it very uncomfortable. God has a way of making us uncomfortable in situations that no longer fit or suit us, mm -hmm. nor do we <laughs> any uh, suit the situation anymore. And um, uh, so recognizing that, um, giving ear to people who have been there and done that, right? And it's sure. not just not just folks with an opinion. Everybody's got a got an opinion. There are a dime a dozen. And um, yeah. what I, what I discover is most of the, the the more opinionated people are the people who have not even done <laughs> what you're doing. They've not even traveled the road you're traveling but from afar. They right. want to give you instruction and direction, but finding and connecting with people, mentors, tutors, mm, coaches, yeah. right? Coaching is big on the landscape now, but people who have been there, done that, and, and have had all of the souvenirs to prove it, right? And, um, sure. and uh, being guided along the way. Um, and still, that, that doesn't do anything to speak to... Um, 
the internal battles that you have to fight, the, the internal struggles mm -hmm. that you, you have to deal with. Um, you know, nobody runs to the Valley of Elah and, and takes on a Goliath. You know, there's a there's right. a, a bear first and a lion first. And right. there are, there are cold nights by a fire, just you and those sheep. There is this process mm -hmm. and um, you've got to be willing um, to enter into that to that process. And nobody um, likes the process. No one likes the process. Right. Because typically true. it happens. It, 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 it happens in obscurity. It's it's hidden. Um, there's no glory in it. There, there are no accolades in it. Nobody's there to give you an attaboy or, or anything like that. You sure. just have to endure. You have to persevere, but you have to be committed. You have to be committed um, to the pivot, committed to, to the disassembly of your comfort zones um, and uh, have a real hunger and a desire um, for the new, right? God, God says in sure. his word, behold, I do a new thing. And I'm a preacher. You got to interrupt me. You get me talking. No, no, I want talking. you to keep talking. This is really good. Please. Um, God keep says, going. behold, I do it. Uh, I do a new thing. And while God is saying to us, I'm, I'm doing a new thing. We keep we keep saying, Lord, take me back. Lord, do it. Do the old thing take again. Take me back to know? my comfort zone. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's not that at all. Um, it, not by any stretch of the imagination. And so. I think a shifting in our mindset and our really has to happen. It, it, it really has to happen. Um, sure, sure. When the, when the work becomes too easy, it's, it's time for a new job. Yeah. That's good. That's good. I love what you said about the internal versus the external, how you really have to deal with what's going on inside of you. Uh, and when you do, you'll see the result of that. I'm paraphrasing, obviously, uh, oh, uh, yes, on the external. Yeah. I was thinking as you were saying that, uh, of that scripture, as a man thinks in his heart, so is yes. he. Um, yes. So it starts on the inside. Any real success is going to come from dealing with your stuff, uh, your issues, your fears, your insecurities, especially when you're, you know, talking about making a transition, all of that stuff's coming up, your fears, your insecurities, yes. you know, like you said, you, you, you're, uh, you know, you want to stay in that comfort zone uh, and that resistance to change for, for so many reasons. Um, and you, so you have to deal with that um, in order to get to that point of success, you know, externally. Um, that, yeah. that, that was really good. That was really good. Yeah. How yeah. do you, Pastor Clark, define success? What is your definition mm. of it? You know, I, I, I think in, in a lot of what I've already said, that really serves as my 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 definition. I know what Webster says and, yeah, yeah. And, and the Collegiate Dictionary and all of these other resources that we have, but I also know that that those definitions get get colored, almost tainted by culture and by sure. context. Sure. And so when I hear the word success, I'm really very careful. I, I almost want to want to ask whose definition are we using? Okay. Right. Okay. Um, because, well, you know, I'm a kingdom guy. I, I believe in 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 um, the kingdom of God. I believe in our work to see his kingdom manifested in the earth today. Matthew, Matthew 6, 10, thy will be done. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. And it wasn't some flowery prayer mm -hmm. that, that Jesus gave us to pray. You know, we call that the Lord's prayer. It really wasn't the Lord's prayer. The Lord's prayer we read in St. John chapter 17. This really is the disciples prayer. Jesus said, when you pray, pray like this. Mm -hmm. This is not how I pray. When you pray, you pray like this. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we really are the mechanisms in the earth to, to, through which his kingdom comes. Yes, I right? agree. We, yes. We, you know, Jesus has come. Holy Spirit is here, but we work in conjunction. Christ in you, the hope of glory, right? Paul mm -hmm. says, 2 Corinthians 6, 1, that we are workers together with God. So that is our role to manifest the kingdom. So I, I need to go back and look at the kingdom's definition mm -hmm. of success. To make sure and you're uh, lining up with that. Exactly. Yes, exactly. I hear you. I hear because you. In, in the in the kingdom of 
of of this world, you know, you can climb a ladder only get to, only to get to the top and find out yeah. that that building that ladder is leaning on the wrong building. Yes, this is not where I wanted to be at all, or and, where I um, should have been, or where I should have been. Sure, and sure. there are many many people who, after um, arduous arduous labor, um, have that epiphany. But you're already, you know, in a place yeah. where you shouldn't be, and so now you or have to do the work. Or after collecting things, um, oh my and gosh. realize that the things really didn't matter. They're empty. Um, after all, they're empty. Yeah, after, yeah. And then right. there was another assignment you should have been on, and you, you didn't. You didn't have fulfill been it. On. Right. Yeah. Right. right. The eternal things. Right. Right. And it's, right. it's seeking the eternal things. In Matthew chapter six, um, Jesus actually says, you know. The Gentiles or the pagans seek the things. Mm -hmm. My people seek the kingdom. Right. And so right. if you ever right. want to know which side of the line you're on, just sure. take a look at what you're seeking. Sure. That, that's not from me. That's from Jesus. Right. It's there. Right. It's yeah. there in the word. Yeah. Well, um, the scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of the God kingdom. and all of these right. things will be added things. unto you. And so right. the focus right. Uh, your focus has to be in the right place. It um, really has to be in the right yeah. place. And, and the many of the contextual definitions of success are are built around seeking the things. Absolutely. I agree with that. Whatever we live the, in a culture that really yes. supports that and, and it really does. Encourages really does. and celebrates that yes. even. It's celebrated, right? right. The, right. the more money you make, the bigger yeah. house you live in, the gated community, the right. number of cars you have and so on and so forth. We celebrate the things and we equate that to success. Yes. If you and got the Benjamins, so to so. speak, you don't need yes, anything else. Yes, yeah. ma'am. And yeah. it, that's not it. I, yeah. I, I look at success in the kingdom as, um, you know, okay, God, what is my availability to you? Mm. And I'm discovering more and more that in the kingdom, availability is spelled flexibility. Wow. Right? Availability is spelled flexibility. Right. And again, I go back to a word I used earlier. You know, how, how willing am I to pivot? Right. Mm -hmm. How willing am I to pivot? You know, if God says pivot, am I willing to pivot? If God says move. Am I willing to move? Uh, if God says transition into this or out of that, what's my level of willingness as it as it relates to that? And then uh, am I willing to be confronted um, with or by my comfort zones? Right. And, and will I relinquish those to God and allow him to set um, uh, new boundaries for me, right? New vistas for me, um, or yeah, this is good. I'm going to, I'm going to stay right here till Jesus comes. And we all have that choice. I agree. We, we, we all agree. have that choice. That's, you know, Pastor Clark, I, I'm going to go ahead and share uh, with you my definition of success because you have uh, largely good. influenced it. So oh, I can't my. miss this moment to share it and to, to share it with you and, and with those that are listening. Uh, because, you know, uh, as I said, you know, you're my former pastor. I've told people that. Um, and you really, you know, I had a relationship with, with Jesus Christ prior to coming to your church and being under your leadership. But, you know, uh, it, it really, I really didn't fully understand destiny and purpose until I met you. You really opened that door. I'm going to say you busted it wide open for me. Mm. Uh, really helped mm. me to understand that wow. there's more to this thing called Christianity, this thing called soul salvation, uh, there's even more to Jesus than just him, you know, sacrificing for you so that you can have eternal life. Um, Amen. that, you know, he yeah. has a, a plan. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And that, I, I have to tell you, that is one of the talk about pivotal moments that is mm. one of the pivotal pivotal moments of my life it changed wow. everything it deepened my christian walk because i now understood this thing is not just about waiting for the pie in the sky you know soon and very soon mm -hmm. one day mm -hmm. i'm going to see jesus in heaven i've had yes. an assignment here on earth right. uh, i was born you know these people say i was born for this <laughs> you know mm -hmm. there's some things i you know you were just you're born for this you know kind of like uh, you That's know good. in the book of esther for such a time as this I've yes. been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this there's an assignment you know I I, I believe that God um, I was saying to someone earlier today that God made you with intention for a purpose you Amen. know there's no yeah. mistakes if you are here on planet earth God wanted you here 
End of story. That's right. There's just no mistakes. He right. doesn't make mistakes. And so if you're here, yeah. he wanted you here. But but he didn't just sort of put you here and say, okay, now just go live. No, you have an assignment. Um, you have a purpose. There's something for you to do, you know, while you're 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 here on earth. Um, and and your assignment is always going to your purpose is always going to be for someone else. Um, yeah. It's not for you to just kind of keep to yourself and enjoy the benefits of whatever God. Gets. It's it's for someone else because we're all interconnected. And so I, I in my mind I always think everyone's needs would be met if we just all found out what our purpose was and then just went about fulfilling that purpose. Isn't that a truth? You know, if we just kind of had the goal of, you know, people work nine to five jobs. I was telling someone earlier and, you know, uh, and they get paid for those jobs. Well, your human job is your purpose. It's fulfilling your purpose. It's it's living out your purpose. It's doing that thing that God put Mm. you on earth to do that really only you can do the way you do it. It's not that someone else can't do it. It's just that you can only do it the way God created you to do it. And so, uh, and and I believe there are always people assigned to our our purpose, people that we're supposed to help, we're supposed to serve. And I always say that if everybody just fulfilled their purpose, I think everybody's needs would be met if we just Mm -hmm. did it God's way. (laughs) Um, But you really (laughs) largely uh, influence that view for me because I don't, you know, I I think of the scripture, many are the plans in a man's heart, but it's God's purpose that prevails. And that is like my favorite scripture um, because I understand that God put me here to do something. His purpose is more important than my plans. Um, And so anyway, thank you for that. Thank you because that really changed my life and and, and certainly informed my, uh, you know, definition of success. But just in a nutshell for those listening, because I know I spoke quite a bit here, uh, my definition of personal success is knowing what God put you here on earth to, to do and fulfilling it. And the quicker you find out what it is, uh, the better, because you can go about doing it and you can leave at the end of your life. I kind of visually think of the cup being empty, your cup, there you know, empty is. your cup out, empty it out, yes. do everything that you were put here to do so that everybody that you were assigned to reach can be reached. Everything that you were supposed to accomplish can be accomplished. The goal is, in my opinion, to have an empty cup. You know, Mark Twain says that the two most important days of your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why and the why in my opinion is your purpose (laughs) you know once you get here now why are you here uh why would why would god have you here what what is his assignment uh for you so i had to share that uh, and thank you for allowing me to share that because uh you have largely uh influenced that um definition and, and and really which has become the way i live yeah. Um, I, I really live that way. I try to live with purpose and an understanding of what God has me here doing. And, and I encourage my, my viewers and listeners to do the same. So thank you for that. Let me ask you no another worries. question. Okay. <laughs> Getting back to you. <laughs> that was great. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> Just wanted to share that. Um, do you consider yourself, Pastor Clark, successful based on your definition? Why or why not? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do. I do. And I think your your words uh, just moments ago really are, are, are the summation of it. I have found my why. Hmm. I have found my why. Okay. And, you know, when you find your why, your, your why, you, you, when you find your why, you, you, you know why. You know why you're here. Right. And, and you, can, you, can, you can step into many different kinds of what, but the why is, is always at the heart of, of the what, right? And it's what keeps um, you going. It's the why sustains me. The, when you find your why, it is the why that, that is sustaining. And, and you, can, you can serve here. So whether, whether I'm serving in South Africa or Cuba or it, wherever else I, I serve in the world, you know, the, the, the context is different and and cultures are different Mm -hmm. but it's the why that brings me there it's the why that sustains me it's the why that brings me safely home and oftentimes before I even get home I'm planning the next trip (laughs) because I found my why that's awesome and and that really you talk about Mm life-giving that's what gives life that's what you know you 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 lay down at night and you are thoroughly and completely exhausted. But man, you can't wait to get up in the morning. <laughs> you can't, you've, you got, can't you've got work wait. to do. You've got Absolutely. an assignment to fulfill. There it is. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's that. And when, 
when we discover that, when we, when we know that we're standing full on in the purposes of God for our lives, now you're living life to the full. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Some paraphrases and translations, other translations say that you might live life to the full. Finding your why is living life to the full. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Finding your why. I love that. Pastor Clark, I'm thinking of uh, those that are uh, listening and are thinking that, you know, I want to try something new. There's something on my mind with my life or my career that I want to change. I might even want to switch my careers. I'm a little nervous, not sure that I have what it takes to make that type mm -hmm. of a change. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm going to see if you want to say anything to that person in addition to what you've already said. And I'm just, I was just sort of jotting some things down. And this is uh, some of the stuff that you said so much, so much good stuff, but some of the stuff that you said that I jotted down that I think you would say, and, and I'm going to let you add if there's anything yeah. additional to that person, um, is you, you got to go through the process. Um, yeah. Do not, you know, you got to go through the process. And within right. that process, um, you know, when you're making any major transition or switch or change, uh, you're going to have to get out of your comfort zone. You're going to have to confront that. Um, whatever that brings up, those insecurities, those fears that we talked about, yeah. all of that stuff that comfort zones can bring up when you're trying to get out of it, that is. Um, you're right. going to have to deal with that and overcome that. Um, you're going to have to uh, deal with the, in, in, within that process and coming out of that comfort zone, you have to deal with, you know, those internal things. Those are the internal things that you're wrestling really with are. to come out of the comfort yeah. zone. You have to confront and deal with that um, or you'll never see anything happen on, you know, successfully externally because you haven't dealt with the internal you talked right. about um you know rec recognizing those seasoned people those people who have been where you're trying to go they 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 they're you know they're sure um and and they're mentors uh don't don't neglect those people find those right. people <laughs> you know um listen to those people uh That's they it. they're only there uh to help i'm, I'm loosely paraphrasing i know but no, you no, but you then kind of end it with and i love that find your why find what god put you here to do find the purpose of god for your life uh because that is the thing that's going to catapult you and sustain you did i leave I mean, anything out no that's really really good I, i'm like who said that that's really you good. said that <laughs> that's you pastor Clark. That's, would you do you no. want to add anything i don't think anything well, else needs to be added but <laughs> you know what i'm, I'm gonna say this you okay. know when 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 confronting when confronting yourself mm -hmm. right and first of all I, I i i firmly believe that we we have confrontation all wrong right because we we look at confrontation as you know, face to face, getting in someone's face. Mm -hmm. Confrontation is a heart issue, mm. not a face issue. Okay. Right. And okay. so when I talk about confrontation and confronting myself, whether it's my comfort zones um, or what I, I have four negative eyes. There are four negative eyes that every man, woman, boy, girl will, 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 will encounter at some point or another. And if you're not careful, uh, one of these eyes or more will hold you hostage. It has the ability to hold you hostage for a lifetime, um, but only because we allow ourselves to be held hostage. Okay. They're not to have power and control over us. But the, it's four negative eyes. The first eye is inadequacy. Hmm. You've got to confront that. Okay. You've got to confront that. And as believers, here's, here's, my, here's my, my, my counterman to that. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Yes, yes. So I'm, I don't have to worry about being inadequate. Okay. It, I can't do it anyway. Because your strength I, is not coming from you anyway. It's not coming from me. Yes, it's coming yes, from him. Yes. So there's inadequacy. Okay. Then there's inferiority. Inferiority, okay. Right? Numbers chapter oh, 13 the tin spy says we we were we we saw ourselves as grasshoppers mm. and so that's how they perceived us it's an interesting passage maybe it's uh, numbers 13 30 through 33 or somewhere in there it's really really okay. powerful but yes. inferiority okay. um the third eye is uh lord help me insecurity insecurity that's a biggie insecurity that's mm -hmm. huge mm -hmm. And then, then the fourth negative eye is the independent spirit. Oh, interesting. Independent yeah. spirit. Yeah. Being yeah. an island it, unto yourself or wanting to ex be. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. You, you, you can't, you can, where, you can't find your why on your own. You cannot find your why okay. on your own. You, God, will, God will send you right 
others, not just others, but right others who will help you along your way. And um, they'll direct you, they'll, and, and they will help you in all of these other, these other areas, right? And so you don't have to suffer from an, from an over-exaggerated sense of self, whether the, whether the exaggeration is that you're too big or too little. Mm-hmm. Both mm-hmm. is the sin of pride. Interesting. And, um, you 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 got to defeat that. You have to, and um, be willing uh, to reach out and and get help and uh, find a coach, a mentor, a tutor. A, yeah. As long as it's somebody who's been where you're trying to go, and um, God is faithful, and that you'll is see awesome. Him move and work in your life. Okay, yeah. that that's awesome. Um, I, I told everybody they were going to have to take notes. I hope they really listen because you are oh. giving us a lot. Um, we're going to wrap it up now. Uh, and I want to ask, give you an opportunity, really, if people want to get in touch with you, they want to know, you know, maybe attend your church and see you in your pastoral role or learn more about the other hats you wear. How can they How can they connect with you? Well, they can do it. Um, the, the, probably the, the best, the easiest way is is via my uh, my email my, um, it's uh, a pastor, P A S T O R, N as in Nancy, B as in boy, C C at gmail dot com. Pastor N B C C at gmail dot com, and uh, our our church's website and uh, uh, app is um, New Bethel of Western New York. New Bethel of W N Y. Um, we can be found on the on the World Wide Web there, and um, you can connect uh, either through either one of those mediums as well. So okay. we'd love to hear from you. Love to be able to serve you. Um, it's, it's that's my why. <laughs> I found my why. That's my why. Awesome. Yes, you definitely. I would agree with that. I second that. That you have definitely found your why. Uh, mm-hmm. Thank you. My last question is on a light note, and that yeah. is, Pastor Clark, what is something that you like or dislike that most people wouldn't know about you that you're, of course, willing to share publicly? Mm, that I like Not or dislike. I dislike. <laughs> Not much I dislike. Um, I'm okay. pretty easygoing. Um, I'll you're pretty you flexible. I really am. <laughs> Um, but I love to do crossword puzzles. Really? They help me relax. They help me. The, the, anything that requires intense concentration, is I find it relaxing. Okay. And a crossword puzzle, <laughs> you, know, you, you got to think a little bit. Sure. But I honestly will do a crossword puzzle almost every night before really? I, I fall asleep. Yes. Oh, Because it relaxes yes. you. It relaxes me. Awesome. Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. I know those crossword puzzles sometimes can jam you up. You have to really think. <laughs> yeah. I don't even look at them that way. Oh, you, you know? don't. See, that's no, interesting I really to don't, me. You know? Okay. And if, you know, you have you get stuck on a word, then you then you find it. After all, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. So okay. I, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you look it up. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but I find it very relaxing. Yeah, that's now great. that's that's just between us, okay? Okay, okay. We'll keep we'll keep it a secret. We'll keep it a secret, okay? <laughs> Pastor Clark, thank you so much for uh, you know, your time. I told everybody that the teacher would be in session and the teacher was in session. I oh, took I for one took notes. I hope you all took notes uh, because he gave us a whole lot. Uh, thank you again, Pastor Clark, for your time, for your willingness uh, to be transparent and for giving us so many insightful takeaways while sharing your views on personal success. Thank you for taking the time to listen to Try Again with Monique. If you enjoyed today's episode, please take a moment to leave a review wherever you are listening. Please also remember to hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when new episodes are available. New episodes will be posted weekly. Please also like and follow us on Facebook. Try Again with Monique is a production of GM Associates released under Creative Common Attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license. Remember, if at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique.